I think we're just about all here. The last that I heard, we were about uh, waiting for about five people, so uh, they may well wander in as we, uh, as we start the morning. But first of all, um, good morning and, and welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, it's great to see so many people here. Um, and welcome to CPI's first inaugural Certified Instructor Conference. And uh, we're hoping that uh, this will be the start of an annual event. So um, please, uh, as you go through the day, think about uh, what's going on and um, you know, try and think what could be improved, what areas you've enjoyed, and uh, give us some feedback because uh, we'd really like to build that into the event going forward. And we're hoping that you'll find it so good that you're going to uh, go back and recommend it to your colleagues and uh, get them to come as well. So um, please, it's, it's very much down to you. We've got a pretty packed day. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, some keynotes, and then we're going to work into the, um, the workshops, have a break for lunch. Uh, we're going to then go back to a, a keynote after lunch, more workshops, and then round about um, four, uh, 3.30, Ish, we've got a, a drinks and buffet uh, over in the reception area. So if you don't have to rush for trains, please come across there. Um, there's a nominal charge. No, no, there's, 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 there's no money involved. It's, it's completely part of the day. Uh, please come over there and um, just take a bit of time to kind of chill out and, and uh, give us some reflections on how the day's gone. What I thought I'd do, just to um, help you relax and uh, get into the mood, I thought I'd give you a bit of background to um, CPI. Um, many of you will know this already, so I apologize if, if it's kind of just repeating what you already know. But for some of you, it won't be information that you will necessarily have come across in the past in terms of CPI as a, a kind of a worldwide organization. So I'm trying to i kind of give you just a flavor of where we're at um, and where we're trying to go with the organization uh, as we move. Been around for about um, 35 years, uh, founded in Milwaukee. Um, which if you know your geography in the US is kind of, think about the center of the states in Chicago, look north as though you're going to Alaska and keep driving for about four and a half, five hours and you'll stumble across a large city called Milwaukee and that's, uh, that's where our worldwide headquarters are. Um, it's, a, it's a nice place, a bit quiet but it's nice. Um, so we were founded about 35 years ago. We've got roughly uh, 235 employees uh, scattered around the world. And of those 235 employees, around about 60 are global professional instructors. They're the guys and girls who, who basically come out and do the training for us. And as their name implies, they are global. Um, literally, they can be teaching in uh, Manchester one day, uh, in England, in Manchester, in America, the next week. It, it really is very much um, an, an international brief. We, um, we train roughly um, just over a million, million two people a year uh, around the world. And um, we've got 30,000 certified instructors, roughly 1,700 in the UK and Europe. So a lot of them are in different parts of the world. We've trained over 11 million people since we started back in 1980. And um, it's growing. It's growing uh, pretty fast uh, every year. We're not only growing in terms of um, what we do as a training organization, but we're looking constantly to improve what we do by trying to merge with other organizations that can bring with us expertise that we we don't necessarily have. And that's going to be an ongoing practice as we look forward into the future. To give you examples of what we've done in the past, um, you can see two examples here. In 2009, we merged with an organization 
in the US called dementia care specialists. And as the name implies, they are exactly that. They're a dementia care organization um, that really do everything from design of buildings through to consultancy, through to the you know, training of uh, dementia patients and so on and so forth. And we're looking to kind of bring that expertise over here to the UK and Europe. And one that you'll be much more familiar with, in 2010 we merged with positive options and despite our best efforts, we've still got Elbert and Chris with us. It's, it's tough, but um, they're, 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 still, they're still around. And, and <laughs> but as, as any professional footballer will know, the contract's not worth anything. Uh, now it, it's, um, it really has been a, a very, very positive uh, merger. And um, I think uh, the best testament to that is that in Europe, you'll all be familiar with, um, with MAPA. Um, MAPA is the adopted program worldwide now for CPI. In the US, we still call it NCI enhanced because of branding issues and all sorts of other stuff and because there are such a big population of uh, uh, organizations using the program in the US. But internationally, it's MAPA. And so, fantastic uh, merger. I, I, they, they'll love it when I say this, but a lot of expertise brought into the organization as a real result of that and uh, really helping uh, to take CPI forward. You know um, pretty well what we do. Um, you know pretty well that our training is applicable from children through to older adults. You probably won't know some of the countries we train in, but here's an example of where the training's currently conducted. Um, it's great to see some people from outside of the UK here. We've got uh, Orliki and Serpa here from our Finland uh, uh, ATC uh, today, and they're going to be here for the rest of the week, and I know they're, they're going to be delivering some programs uh, on Thursday and Friday. Um, everywhere, even down to St. Helena, which is probably one of the most remotest place, places on Earth. We've got one certified instructor there. I don't think he's here today. Um, no, no. Uh, you may be familiar with the story of St. Helena. They try, there's a boat that goes there every six months from South Africa with provisions. They put in an airport about uh, three months ago, but they actually had to close it because uh, they put it on the top of a cliff and it's unsafe for aircraft to land. So it's a fairly remote... Uh, remote place. Um, again, I, I'm not sure how familiar you are with this, but underpinning all of our programs is what's a philosophy, for want of a better word, it's known as the six core strategies. And this de was developed in the States by um, a lady called Kevin Hutchall, uh, practically based research. Um, and she basically says that for change, particularly culture change in an organization to take place, you've got to have these six elements. You've got to have these six elements in place. And first and foremost, you've got to have acceptance of change at the top of the organization at the governance level. Without that, change won't happen. We're not going to go into this today, but interestingly enough, on Thursday and Friday at the Restraint Reduction Conference, Last year, we had presentations from Kevin. She came over and presented the six core strategies. And this year, we're following up with a lady called Janice LaBelle, who worked with Kevin for a number of years in terms of the practical applications of the six core strategies in some of the operations in the States and throughout the world. So very, very important. We're the only training organization that actually has this underpinning our training programs. Um, CPI accreditations, we're build accredited. Uh, I'll say that again, we're build accredited. And we're actually, we've just gone through um, our reaccreditation. Uh, we received confirmation that we've been reaccredited for another three years earlier this week, uh, which is good news. A um, bit kind of on tender hooks coming to the conference and not quite sure what they were going to say, but uh, that's been uh, reconfirmed for three years. Um, Again, I'm not sure if you're all aware, we do run a, a degree program 
at uh, Wolverhampton University or in conjunction with Wolverhampton University. There are lots of exemptions in terms of that degree program uh, if you've gone through the, the MAPA training programs. Um, there is also now a diploma and a certification. If for whatever reason you don't qualify for a full degree program, you can still go through a certification and a diploma program with uh, less academic qualifications uh, in conjunction with uh, Wolverhampton. If you've got any interest in that or you know of anybody in your organization has, please contact uh, Mr. McHugh um, and he'll give you all of the, uh, all the background information you'll ever want to know. And he is one of the tutors uh, at uh, Wolverhampton. <laughs> Can we just strike that from the video recording? <laughs> um, uh, most of the other stuff you probably know. Our curriculum is matched against uh, the UK Department of Health Positive and Proactive Care Act from 2014. And more recently, it's been updated to uh, totally uh, uh, comply with and, and uh, take on board the recommendations in the NICE NG10 uh, guidelines that came out uh, last year. Um, I think the only other thing I would say on this slide really that I draw your attention to um, is the Restraint Reduction Network. We set up the Restraint Reduction Network in conjunction with um, Professor Joy Duxbury of Lancaster University three years ago. Um, we had the inaugural conference of that in 2014. This is the third year we'll be um, sponsoring and hosting the conference. It follows on, on Thursday and Friday. And the Restraint Reduction Network now is pretty well the go-to organization for government, department of health, and most um, kind of experts uh, in the field in the UK for anything to do with restraint and restraint uh, reduction and restraint training. So our programs fit with um, all of these three areas, build, skills for care, and uh, Department of Health. I, I just put this slide up because um, it's worth reflecting, I think, a little bit about what MAPA training is. Um, I think so many people come on their first foundation program and they're expecting to come on um, almost a, uh, a physical training program of some description. And really MAPA and uh, our philosophy is not that at all. It's all about avoiding ever having to get to that physical intervention stage. And it's just, it's worth reflecting a little bit on the, say the 10 units of the uh, foundation program where the f you know, eight units, 80% of the program is nothing to do with physical intervention. And that's really what we're all about. It's only that unit eight disengagements in unit nine when we actually get into physical interventions themselves. And so often, the comments we get back after the training program is, it wasn't what I expected. It wasn't what I, I expected. I thought I was gonna be spending most of the day out on the floor learning techniques. And it's not. Another area we're, we're getting a lot of questions about is um, positive behavior support. And um, quite clearly, MAPA is not a positive behavior support program. However, Positive behavior support and MAPA work together very well, and MAPA sits quite comfortably within the positive behavior support framework. We're not involved in primary intervention, but we're very, very, very much involved with secondary crisis intervention and post crisis support in learning. So I don't know if that comes up within your organizations, but certainly. Um, when we're talking to uh, new customers or existing customers, PBS um, is uh, often a topic of conversation. If you want to know more about it, um, 
and you want to understand a little bit more how MAPA sits within PBS, I can think of no better person than Chris Sterling uh, to give you all the background that you'll ever need in that area. Um, cheers. Thanks. You can, you can see he's absolutely over the moon about that uh, recommendation. Um, our GPIs. Our GPIs uh, are the lifeblood of the company. Um, there's a number of them here today. Uh, they are highly qualified people. Um, they are highly effective and they're highly skilled and highly trained. Um, in essence, we, we will only take on a GPI if they have the um, professional qualifications we're looking for. And in addition, that they have the practical experience in services uh, that most of you uh, as customers are dealing with day to day. So we're looking for people with practical education backgrounds, practical social care backgrounds, practical health and uh, mental health backgrounds. We tend to think about uh, MAPA when we talk about uh, CPI, but three or four other programs worth mentioning today, um, CH3, which you may or may not be familiar with, um, which is really um, holding skills for essential treatment and care. Um, more details from any of the GPIs you'll be meeting during the course of the day. Our Dementia, cap dementia Capable Care program is very prop popular, really deals with behaviors that you're likely to see as the various stages of dementia and Alzheimer's progress and how to recognize those changes in behavior and again intervene as early as possible to, uh, to prevent uh, situations uh, developing into crisis. Our training is based on an adult uh, learning model called cognitive behavior uh, model of delivery. Um, so it's really aimed at trying to uh, speed the transfer of training from the training room to the workplace. And uh, it's, it's proved pretty effective over the years. Um, all the training is evidence-based. In some examples here uh, of recent uh, publications, you'll notice that Chris is uh, mentioned, uh, in fact, every time there. Uh, Chris was instrumental in putting this slide together and said that I had to make sure that his name was up there. So uh, we, we've tried to, to cover that. We have all our products on a three-year cycle, so they're continually being developed. And that's so important. And, and it's also important that you, when you're delivering your training in your places of work, think about what's going well. Think about what's be, what could be improved and feed that back to us. We won't put it into the program necessarily straight away, but it goes literally into a big melting pot and every three years, we gather all that information together from all over the world and then update the programs accordingly. So it really is helpful if you can just take a bit of time to do that and feed that back to us as we go along. Another area I'd mention here is um, Knowledge Advisor. We're working with an external organization called Knowledge Advisor. And every time we um, deliver a program, they will immediately contact all the participants in the program that we deliver um, and ask for an evaluation, independent of ourselves. And then they'll follow up. I think it's um, three months after the initial program delivery to ask how the training is going and whether or not the people who've attended the training are seeing the results they expected in the workplace. And we're fed back that information, and then we, we can evaluate how the programs are going. The nice thing is, uh, and it, it's kind of I think a great source of pride throughout CPI, is we're then ranked against the top universities around the world in terms of student feedback. And uh, we, we score amazingly well uh, in terms of practical transfer into, into the workplace of, of what is being taught. So knowledge advisors, if anybody says I've received an email from knowledge advisors, should I, should I complete it? Yes, please. Very, very important. Um, many of you won't know or maybe not have met before Lorraine. 
Uh, Lorraine is over in the back here. Lorraine heads up our customer service quality and validation team. Uh, and again, if you have uh, any questions regarding the program, um, either go through to Lorraine or through to um, the GPI help desk that we have uh, in operation every week from Monday to Friday, nine till five. If you have a concern about a delivery of a program or you're worried about um, something uh, within your service, please either contact the help desk or go to uh, Lorraine's department. In terms of regular updates, I hope you're all receiving the monthly e-newsletter. Do you all receive that, the supportive stance? You don't. If you don't, can you let uh, me know um, afterwards and uh, we'll make sure that we've got your email address because that comes out every month um, and it's, uh, it's, I think it's quite informative. And then every quarter we have a, 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 an actual journal published called Forum. Um, which again has been kind of UK Europeanized. Do, do you all receive that? Yeah, cool. Okay. Right. Good, everybody says. Thankfully, he's finished. Um, we've got a pretty full day, as I said. We're going to start off with, um, I think, of what promises to be a very, very informative uh, talk. Nick Horn uh, from Signet uh, Healthcare is going to um, basically walk us through over the next uh, half an hour or so um, his personal journey of, uh, of MAPA. Uh, Nick is a meritorious instructor. Um, he's got bags of experience. Uh, he really has um, uh, been an advocate uh, uh, for MAPA um, in the services in which he uh, works. And uh, with no further ado, please uh, welcome Nick to the stage. Thank you.